The Bible book of Revelation, also known as the book of the Apocalypse, explains the true science of enlightenment, body, mind and soul, in a fantastical and epic parable only 22 chapters long. The often misinterpreted mysteries of this enigmatic book are the keys to freedom, liberation, and abundance. Elevation. The book of Revelation is a testimony about transformation. The ascension healers who wrote the original version knew the intricate science of human DNA, which is the fabric of life. This empowering interpretation explains the potential embodied within every human person. Elevation decodes the metaphors and symbols in the book of Revelation with the aid of mystical insights and the corroboration of the latest scientific discoveries and theories. The interpretations given within this book focus on the chemistry and anatomy of the miraculous human body and the body's powerful electromagnetic energy, which fluctuates according to one's psychological and emotional health. For nothing is concealed that shall not be made known, Luke 8, 17, meaning nothing is hidden that will not be exposed. Everyone knows that the most famous literary masterpieces are metaphorical and the King James Book of Revelation is no exception. The Book of Revelation is a cinematic masterpiece with an all-star cast, but its allegories have clouded the minds of its readers for centuries. The coincidences revealed here cannot be denied. And these elucidations are certainly not for the faint-hearted. At the Last Supper, Jesus, the I Am within man, broke the bread, which is the universal substance of life, and said, eat. When the initiate consciously realizes the presence of the universal substance in every part of their temple body, they are eating of the tree of life. The I am, also known as Jesus, then said, this is my body, meaning this is soma, or in other words, this is the subtlest form of matter. Soma feeds the body cells, RNA, DNA molecules, and eventually becomes consciousness. In the body, soma is related to the endocrine system, melatonin upgrades and feelings of bliss. It powers the somatic nervous system, also known as the psyche, which is the soul, the psychosomatic body. The je suis, I am, Jesus, then takes a cup and says, drink. This is the blood of the covenant. The covenant is an agreement it is natural law, the rigid principle of justice, also known as God. Natural law never alters or ceases. The law is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. Living in alignment with natural law enables us to access our true spiritual inheritance. This is the great work that John completed, allowing him to receive the vision that is known as the book of Revelation. Jesus, the I am, and the disciples, which are the faculties of mind, then go to the place called Gethsemane. All places are frequencies. The place called Gethsemane is the frequency in spiritual current or cosmic ether where we see the face or more accurately feel the presence of God.
The metaphysical meaning of Gethsemane is oil press. Oil signifies spirit and illumination, while press signifies a process of extraction. The finer essences of the spirit are being pressed and raised to higher planes of expression. Elevation, the divine power of the human body, explains how oil corresponds with potassium, also known as potash or callium, which dissolves matter. Potassium equals potential. The crucifixion story concludes when the stone is rolled away, revealing the resurrection. Luke writes, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. In reality, the holy tomb is crystallized substance or matter, which is often signified by a cube. In the book of Revelation, the dimensions given for New Jerusalem describe a cube. And in the book of Exodus, the Holy of Holies has square proportions too. Anatomically, this corresponds with the cube-like bone called the dorsum celli in the sphenoid bone. Not forgetting, of course, that all bones are crystals or crystallized substance of a kind. The sphenoid is called the keystone of the cranial floor, for it locks everything into place. Beyond the earthly, material, visible 3D realm is the heavenly, invisible 4D plus realm. Everything visible has its counterpart in the invisible. The counterpart of the visible cube is the invisible cube, a block formed from the subtle essence of light directed by sound vibration, thought. This etheric cube is continually being molded and perfected by the one who seeks enlightenment. Manly P. Halls says that the perfect cube represents the personality that has had all the unevenness, roughness and inequality polished away by experience. Even the points of the Masonic compass gives a nod to this cube that we each seek to perfect. One side of the compass points towards the heart, which is the earth, feeling and manifest thought, and the other points towards mind, heaven, ideas, and unmanifest thought. When there is a union between emotion and thought, the I am, je suis, Jesus, is liberated from its tomb or cube. In another layer of creation, the cube represents the human, which is the car or vehicle that God used to come from being into existence. We are all manifestations of divine mind. In her book, The Keys to the Universe, Harriet Curtis says, the cube is undeveloped man. The cube unfolded is the cross. When the cube is opened, it makes three squares across and four squares down, which equals the spiritual number seven. This is also illustrated by James Price in his book, The Initiation of Johannes. And in the science of numerology, Shirley Blackwell Lawrence says, the ancients saw the cube, number four, as undeveloped man because he closes himself in. When the door is shut, he cannot see. Once the side of the cube are perfected, and become even by unconditional love, the cube's rotation forms a dodecahedron. The dodecahedron is the fifth element. Five perfectly formed spinning cubes create one dodecahedron. So the rolling stone, which reveals the resurrected Christ, is the turning cube which forms the dodecahedron ascension vehicle. Likewise, when the dodecahedrons move from the invisible 
into the visible, they become the various cubes or bricks that we see throughout the many, many layers of creation. For example, many minerals, which are the elements, elementals or angels, such as sodium or natrium, crystallize to form microscopic cubes. Our bodies are, of course, made up of this elemental stardust, soma or cosmic plasma. The body's epithelial cells are also cube-shaped, which is interesting because there is also what's known as the 555 epithematic nature of man. The soul has three parts. The reasoning part, the epithematic part, which is hunger, thirst and sexual appetite, etc. And the thumotic part, which is the emotional part. The tomb has the spirit of life. I am Jesus, sealed within it, which remains in darkness until the stone is rolled away. The rolling stone also corresponds biblically with Gilgal. Gilgal means rolling away, circle, wheel or whirlwind. George W. Carey says that Gilgal symbolizes the 12th dorsal vertebrae because this is the location where the semi-lunar, half moon, ganglion or nerve connects to the spine, which is where the germ, seed or arc enters the spinal cord when we go through the process of raising the sacred secretion. This makes a lot of sense when we consider the other biblical mentions of Gilgal, because Gilgal is the place where Saul was made king over Israel. Gilgal is the place where Elisha neutralized poison. Gilgal is the place where Elijah was taken up in the chariot of fire. So we see that this tombstone, rolling stone or turning cube which transforms into the dodecahedron ascension vehicle has literally dozens of correspondences throughout the microcosm. Looking at the meaning of Gilgal once more reveals even more correspondences. Remember, Gilgal means rolling away, circle, wheel, or whirlwind. The term whirlwind illustrates the presence of the dodecahedron ascension vehicle as the sacred geometry of DNA. The visible whirlwind double helix of DNA is supported by the invisible scaffolding of the sacred geometry, which in this case is the glorious form of a ratcheting dodecahedron. DNA is the fabric of life. It can be the raiment of glory or it can be the sackcloth of decay. It morphs continually in accordance with divine law. Gilgal also means circle or wheel, which now gives us a, a macrocosmic view of the dodecahedron. Each one of the 12 sides that it takes to form a dodecahedron is a five-sided pentagon. The 12 sides or 12 pentagons of the dodecahedron correspond with the Maseroth or the zodiacal signs that form the great wheel. They also correspond with the 12 disciples, the 12 faculties of mind, the 12 days of Christ mass and the 12 tribes of Israel. According to Strong's Bible Concordance, the root of dodecahedron is dodeca, which literally means 12. In Hebrew gematria, the noun for Israel translates to 541. A regular pentagon has five vertexes of 108 degrees each vertex. That totals 540 degrees. The additional one in Israel, 541, represents the core or the center point of the dodecahedron. 
the stones or tones of sound in creation also correspond with the sacred dodecahedron and this is where the sound do as in do re mi fa so la etc got its name from the Essene personification of Jesus appears within a dodecahedron in Salvador Dali's The Last Supper. The Essenes were students of Plato's work and Plato said that the dodecahedron was the shape of the whole universe, microcosmically and macrocosmically. Socrates told Plato that he had visited space and seen that Earth is a 12-patched leather ball, aka a dodecahedron. I'll conclude with a few more examples of dodecahedrons throughout the infinite layers of creation. So, in the chemistry of lead, beta and besant, salt, which is natrium chloride, is a nest of 12 cones or vortices, essentially forming 12 faces that make, of course, a dodecahedron. The salt in the ocean and in our blood spins light, which forms the 12 star emerald cross. Then we have the Bible's Macabre and Ezekiel's wheel, which are dodecahedral. And in Madame Blavatsky's Isis Unveiled, the map of the zodiac is dodecahedral. Um, in the anonymous book Geometric Keys, it says, in the infinite nest of dodecahedra, each vertex is a simple power of the golden mean, making this nature's only perfect heterodine harmonic information path between frequencies, scales, dimensions, and worlds. And lastly, the craft in Carl Sagan's movie Contact, starring Jodie Foster, was of course a dodecahedron. Through the experience of elevation experienced by John in the book of Revelation, the frequency of all possibility amplifies the connection to your own inner guide, your personal I am, je suis, Jesus, to the point where you are so centered and established in divine mind that you cannot be disturbed by falsities. Creating the dodecahedron resonance for yourself begins and ends with love because the heart creates the sonic elements that weave the nest of the dodecahedron at the moment of love. So I really hope that you enjoyed this little introduction um, to my book, which is called Elevation, The Divine Power of the Human Body. The book is a study of the book of Revelation using the King James Version. Um, and it's split into two halves, the book. The first breaks down all of the key themes and characters. Um, and then the second half is a um, verse by verse translation. So you really get to take a close look at all of the individual symbols um, and what they signify. And you know, at this time in the world where we are literally being swarmed by information, whether it's true information or misinformation, the point is that we must be vigilant and keep being aware of the fact that information does exactly what it says in the word. It, it forms inwardly. In formation. So it forms ions which form ideas, which form expressions, which will, you know, radiate from us and be visited back within um, because that is the perpetual law of karma. What goes around comes back around in this 
macrocosmic pool of creation as individuals but also you know on the whole so there are some other things that I want to say about what's going on um, at some point um, but I just wanted to get this book out um, so that people can you know, just take whatever they need from it or want to take from it or not or whatever um, so as always I just pray that divine love will manifest for you in you and through you um, and I pray for all of humanity that we will remember our divinity um, and that we will bridle it and we will find a way to overcome the falsities that we're being presented with because ultimately it is us who holds the power so peace and light thank you for watching god bless